Hi, my name is Roy Toazan, and I am the Associate Art Director for the Dead Space Remake. Today, I want to talk to you about the environment art process, how we are remaking the game with our new tools, techniques, and pipelines, and finally do a demo in the Frostbite engine on how we took a room from the legacy version to our current work in progress. Today, we are going to look at the MRI room in Chapter 2. When Dead Space was released more than 14 years ago, the visuals were great. It set the bar high for its time. But since then, technology has evolved, and with that, it allowed us to remake the game and really accentuate the main pillars of horror, immersion, and a lived-in world. Let me quickly go over our process with you. On the environment side, we break down our pipeline into six phases that go from L0 to L5. L0 is our R&D phase where we analyze the original game and identify what we can remake this area, either through gameplay, visuals, sound, etc. Based off any changes, we would do some exploration concepts to improve on the art pillars. L1. This phase is when the area will be playable, with rough blockout of the visual intentions. When re recreating a room in Frostbite, the artist will break it down into kits, pieces that they can use to build the room. Think of this as Lego blocks. They will be simple shapes, sizes, that represent the theme of the room. L2 is where details and colors are added into the kits to support the thematic of the area. Large props are staged, and the initial mood will be set. L3 is where we start to update the different PBR materials to a more realistic look, add more props to support the theme, and refine the lighting and VFX. You should start to get that immersive feeling by having the area more relatable and believable. L4 is where we add all the narrative elements. All the architectural kits get a polish pass with a wear and tear, small props, signs, markings, bloodstains, dirt and grime are added to get that lived-in world feeling and give that horror storytelling element. L5 is where the polished elements of all the art department gets integrated to give that final high-quality next-gen Dead Space look and feel. This will be coming soon. Just to get a proper understanding of where we are in the production for this area, we are here in the beginning stages of our L4 phase. Now that you know how we work, we want to next demonstrate how we will remake these assets. Here is an example of a legacy asset and here are some of the elements we plan on adding to get that immersive feeling throughout the ship. We want to show functionality. Rivets in the metal to show how it was put together. Latches on the window frames to show how the workers can remove it if it ever needed to be repaired. The variation in our PBR materials, the way light reacts to different types of painted metal versus the raw metal underneath. More realistic light fixtures. The dirty glass cover protects the light sources giving that depth and more realistic feel. Add more shape and depth to the model to give it that believable look. To get that old live-in ship look, we added wear and tear to the paint metal and dirt accumulation in areas that would not normally get cleaned. Now that we've highlighted a few examples of how we are going to remake an asset, in our next section, we want to put you in the seat of an artist and show you how our tools, techniques, and pipeline works. Hi there, I'm Evan Yovanovich, Senior Environment Artist on the Dead Space Remake, and I'm going to give you a closer look at how we make assets for the Ishimura. Here is an example wall asset as it passes through all the various stages of production. L1, raw model made to specific metrics for maximum reuse. L2, further refined modeling and color pass added. L3, more modeling details are added, custom masks are baked to control grime and wear using in-engine tools. L4, fine trim and embedded details are added as well as beveled edges. Next, we'll have a look in Maya to see how the color pass is achieved. Here in Maya, we'll be using the palette UV tool created by our tech team to help change the colors of our wall mesh. On the right-hand side, we can see the UV coordinates of the model, which correspond to the mesh's faces. As I click the different swatches in the UV palette tool, the UV shells are moved to different quadrants, resulting in a color change. By using this palette system, we are able to keep colors consistent to art direction and swap in different palette textures for each district theme, such as clean, industrial, and public, depending on the assets used within the ship. Now, let's dig into how some of our mesh details are achieved. Here in Blender, I'm going to show you one of our trim sheet texture sets I made by rebuilding and remixing details from the original Dead Space into a new texture layout. 
As we can see, this texture set uses parallax occlusion mapping, which allows you to mimic depth and details on an otherwise very simple geometry. One technique we have explored for applying these texture sets on models is using the third-party add-on decal machine to define specific parts of the texture set to a library, which can then be easily swapped and adjusted on the model. As you can see, this technique makes it fun to try out different trim combinations and can produce some interesting results. Here we will apply the same library to the wall example we saw before. Through use of these trim textures, we are able to quickly try different approaches and create consistent details. We try our best to focus on how these models would actually be constructed, creating panel lines where pieces meet and connect, as well as adding handles and access points where parts could be removed for maintenance and cleaning. Hi, I'm Xavier Perrault, and I am the lead environment artist on the Dead Space Remake. I will be talking more in the details about our approach to level art and how we set the tone of the different areas of the ship and tell the story of the Ishimura through our environments. We have now the architectural modules modeled and their mask baked using our engine tool. The masks will define how the wear and grime build up on each of the modules. You can tell how the edges are scratched and how rust sits in the creases. The architectural shader reads those masks and by tuning the parameters of the master shader, we can control the amount of wear and grime in a whole section of the ship at once. The shader defines the ground state of the architecture visuals, but at this point it all looks the same everywhere. The world masking volumes come in play. They are fully scalable and can be used in many ways for multiple layering effects. We can increase the amount of wear or rust built up on the assets, or even add new layers on top, like water or dust, for instance. Of course, these techniques are better applied once the assets are put in context, in the level. Tuning the master shader and adding volumes of world masking are an integral part of defining the storytelling of the ship and how it has aged over time. With a growing library of architectural modules, they can be assembled to fully build all the sections of the Ishimura as one big interconnected ship in line with our metric guidelines. Then comes the main lighting intentions and the props dressing. We always ask ourselves what the function of that room is, how do we make it believable, and tell the story of the people that live there and how the events took place. Projected decals of labeling and gore are the icing on the cake. Going a step further, we can add a few world masking volumes to wear down the floor in a realistic way where people used to stand and walk around in this setup. Maybe a water canister fell over near that desk and leaked all over the floor. But that was a while ago, and rust built up all around it. After seeing our pipeline, tools, and in-engine demo, Using the small room besides the MRI machine, you can see in this before and after comparison, we remade this room to accentuate the art pillars even more. We want the player to believe that the Ishimura crew worked here, that the functionality of this room makes sense, and you can even imagine yourself working in this environment. If I take this part of the room, for example, before there used to be some shelves, lockers, and props around the wall with some writing on the ground, we remade it to have more immersive and believable theme. We made this corner of the room more functional by adding an examination bed with medical equipment. We gave that lived-in world by aging the walls and floors with some wear and tear, added dirt and grime. This is the oldest functioning mining ship. We wanted to make sure that came through in the environment. Finally, we injected the horror pillar into this room with a bloody narrative scene on the bed and floor. We want to insinuate that something horrible happened here and give that sense of danger looming around every corner. Thank you for joining us on this behind-the-scene look at the environment art process.